also from uh, USP uh, Chemistry Institute. Please turn on. And I'm going to show uh, the last two works that we have done uh, about the sodium ion batteries. Uh, my presentation has the title Theoretical Investigation of the Sodium Ion Transport Mechanism and Electrolyte Performance in Ion Liquids Sodium Ion Electrolytes. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, all the support from USP, Kiski, Ketenan, Papespi, and SIM. So uh, I think first question is why we are working with sodium ion batteries. Uh, in the last days, we have talked a lot about the transition for the renewable energy sources, greener energy sources, new energy sources. And if you think about uh, these energies, uh, like uh, solar and wind, they are intermittent. And in some point of their application, we have to use uh, energy storage devices, such as batteries. And if we think about today, the main battery that we have in the market uh, are the batteries that are based on lithium. And if you look here in the, can you see my point here in this projection, uh, we can see that we don't have lithium enough to suppress this future demand. So we have to replace lithium in several applications. And in this case, Sodium is a good candidate. Uh, first, because uh, sodium and lithium has a quite similar chemistry. So we can use a lot that we already know from lithium. And also sodium is much more uh, abundant and cheaper than lithium. And also uh, with sodium, we can use cheaper components in the battery, such as aluminum collector and iron electrodes. But to reach a higher performance in the sodium ion batteries, we have to develop new materials for the cathode, anode, and also electrolytes. And this is what we are doing here. Uh, we are working with ion liquids based electrolytes for sodium ion batteries. Um, an ion liquid is a combination of a cation and an anion. And to uh, change the structure of the cation and the anion, uh, we can create several ion liquids. And this is quite good because now we have like a 1 billion possibilities of new ion liquids. Uh, ion liquids are molten salts uh, that are liquids and temperature below 100 Celsius in general. And they have very interesting properties, such as low toxicity, low flammability, distance ionic activity, and uh, wide electrochemical windows. And those properties are quite good for electrolyte applications. But ion liquids have uh, one main drawback, that is the large viscosity. So if we want to use ion liquids as electrolytes, we have to understand how are the ion liquids transport properties? How we can change or control those properties? And in the case of the sodium ion electrolytes, we have to understand what is the sodium diffusion mechanism inside of these electrolytes and how we can improve this diffusion mechanism. And this is our main goal in our works. So is to understand the sodium diffusion mechanism and the ion liquid based electrolytes performance in an atomistic point of view using simulations. Uh, we performed uh, two uh, types of molecular dynamic simulations, classical simulations. Uh, the first one here on the left side, we simulate 25 ion liquids uh, that are those ion liquids here. So we have five different cations and five different anions. Um, we are using here uh, atomistic simulations. So we have the total description of the atoms inside the ions. And also we developed a first grain uh, model for this ion liquid, that is the amine BCN4. So in the cation, we have three beans, and an ion, we have just one bean. Uh, using the first grain model, we were able to run simulations, like long simulations, uh, 500 nanoseconds, using extremely large box with 3,000 uh, ion liquid pairs. Um, we just published these two works, and the references are here. So uh, first, uh, we have the electrolyte transport for various. So look here, we have cell diffusion coefficients, ionic activity. So uh, in the top, we have the systems that are composed by the midazolium, imine, pyrrhed with five different anions. And in the bottom, we have the ammonium, pyrrhed with five different anions. And if you look here in zero, we have the neat ion liquid. So when we add sodium in the systems, we see a decrease in the cell diffusion coefficients and also in the ionic activity. At the same time, if you look here to our first grain simulations, we see that increasing the sodium concentration, we see an increase in the viscosity in the system. So this means that when we add sodium to the ionic electrolytes, there's a decrease in the ionic transport in the systems that is related to the strong interaction between the sodium and the anion. But if we look here to the sodium transport number, we see a different behavior. In this case, the increase in the sodium concentration increases the uh, sodium transport number. 
And this is quite good for an electrolyte application because uh, a high transport numbers means that the sodium is contributing more to the overall ionic activity of the system. And to reach a high performance in an electrolyte, in a sodium ion battery, we need to find the highest uh, sodium transport number possible. And also, this increase in the transport number indicates that we are facing here some change in this sodium diffusion mechanism. So to try to understand what is happening here, first, we looked to the sodium local environment. So we have here three RDFs, uh, radium solution functions for the midazolium TF20 system. So we have first here, midazolium and anion interaction, anion and anion, and sodium and anion. If you look here to the cation anion interaction, we see that when we increase the sodium concentration, there is a decrease in the RDF peak. This means that we are seeing some kind of the weakening of the interaction between the cation and an anion. But at the same time, if looking here to this dashed line, we see an increase in the coordination number of the anions around the cations. If you look now to the anion and anion interaction, we see a decrease in the RDF peak and also a displacement to the peak to close distance. So this means that when we have soil in the systems, the anions approach to each other. So now we have like a, uh, one sodium that has a lot of anions around uh, themselves. If you look here, to the sodium and anion interaction, we see the decrease in the first peak of the RDF, but here we are also seeing uh, one shoulder in the peak and the peak decreases, but the shoulder is increasing. So this means that we have two different interaction modes in the systems. And when we are increasing the sodium concentration, there is a change in the population of those interaction modes. And those interaction modes are those ones here. We have the binding date mode, in which one sodium is interacting with two uh, oxygens from the same uh, anion, and mononitate mode, in which one sodium is interacting with one oxygen from the same anion. So here we have special social functions. So each one of this green shell represents uh, one population of the sodiums. So if you look here to TF2M, TSAC, C1, C4, we see a similar uh, solvation structure. So probably in those three systems, we can see by the state and monodated structures. In the case of the NF anion, uh, we see that all the sodiums are close to the, all the oxygens at the same time because all the oxygens are bounded to the same super atom. And in the case of the TFSAM, we see two populations, one close to the nitrogen and the second one closer to the oxygen. And when we look to, the, to the RDFs for these interactions, we see an interesting behavior. Uh, in the case of the sodium and nitrogen, we see a decrease in the coordination number, but for the sodium and the oxygen, we see an increase in the coordination number. So this means that also in this anion, when we are increasing the sodium concentration, we are changing the populations of the interactions. And those changes in the populations are because of the formation of this kind of structure that we have here, that we call this structure, bridge structure, in which we have one sodium interacting with one more than uh, an ion at the same time, and also the anions are interacting with more than one sodium at the same time. And this structure results in the formation of some aggregates in the systems, and this sodium and anion aggregates lead to the decrease in the transport properties that we saw in the previous slides. So uh, looking now to the aggregates, uh, here we have the RDF for the interaction between the sodium and the sodium. And we can see here that the peak in the RDF are close uh, to zero. So we have a close distance between the sodiums, even both are the same uh, are cations because they have the anions to stabilize the interaction. And also when we increase the concentration, we see here the increase in the coordination number. When we look here to the aggregate size distribution, we see that when we increase uh, the sodium concentration, there is an increase in the aggregate size distribution. So now when we have more sodium in the systems, we are seeing a larger aggregates. And also here in our first grain model, uh, we have the scattering functions for the sodium and sodium interaction and the sodium and the anion interaction. So we see here that when we increase the sodium concentration in the systems, there's an increase in this peak here for the anion and the sodium close to eight. And this means that here we have a better, better ordering, the charge ordering the systems. So this means that those aggregates are not just local aggregates. They are expressed in the whole liquid structure. And they are also changing the nanostructure of the liquid, creating something like a heterogeneous uh, nanostructure. Also here for the sodium solid interaction, we see an increase in the peak close to them. That means that we have some ordering uh, between sodium and sodium, even in long distance.
Uh, now, to try to understand how those aggregates are changing the transport mechanism, we have Van Hove functions. Uh, in one Van Hove function, if the Van Hove function uh, has a Gaussian behavior, means that uh, all the ions in the system, in this case sodium, they have a very similar displacement. So this means that we have just one type of diffusion mechanism inside the electrolyte. But if our Van Hove function uh, does not follow a Gaussian behavior, this means that we have more than one or two uh, types of diffusion mechanism. So if you look here uh, to the slowest uh, sodium molar fraction that we have, 0 0.2, we see that the Van Hove function follows a uh, Gaussian behavior that is this dashed line here. But when we look here to 0 0.6, we see that the Van Hove function does not fit a Gaussian behavior. So this means that in the slowest concentration, we have just one uh, diffusion mechanism, and the highest uh, concentration, we have different diffusion mechanisms. Looking here to the right side, we have uh, in B the slowest uh, sodium in the systems and C the fastest sodium in the systems. And this is the coordination of the anions around the sodium in the time. So if we look here to the 0 0.2 uh, mole fraction, we see that both slowest and fastest has a very similar behavior. But when we look here to the 0 0.6, we see that in the case of the slowest, uh, the sodium is bounded to the anion. So we have like this. Uh, large traces here, that means that the sodium is moving together with the anion. But when we look here to the fast, we can see that the anions, the, sorry, the sodiums are changed between the anions. So this means that in the fat, the slowest sodium is moving together with his solvation shell that we call vehicular mechanism. And the fastest uh, sodium is moving across different solvation shells, uh, like jumping between different aggregates that we call this hoping diffusion mechanism. And this difference in the diffusion mechanism, this appearance of the open diffusion mechanism results in the increase in the transport numbers that we saw in the beginning of the slides. So beyond uh, the transport properties, we also looked to the electrochemical windows of the ion liquids using DFP calculations and MEG simulations. So uh, using our MEG trajectories, uh, we extracted some ion pairs for the systems, the niche ion liquids, and for each systems, we performed the FT calculations to get the omolumu gap, and uh, we correlated the omolumu gap with the electrochemical stability of the ion liquids. So, as we can see here, we have uh, two main behaviors. First, uh, the ammonium has a higher electrochemical stability than the midazolium, and this is uh, directly related to the higher stability of the cation because of the higher stability of the aliphatic chains in relation to the aromatic ring, the midazolium anion, sorry, cation. And also, if we look here, we can see that when we have the ammonium, we have one behavior when we change the anion. And when we have the midazolium, we have another behavior. So this means that uh, the electrochemical windows is also dependent on the way of the solution shell is organized. So the way that the cation and anion is interacting. But if we look here, all systems that we have uh, present uh, and the electrochemical windows higher than four. And in the case of the ammonium, we can reach almost six uh, electron volts. That are pretty good for electrolyte applications. So uh, our conclusions, uh, we see the decreasing in the overall ionic mobility in the systems because of the formation of the sodium uh, anion clusters aggregates in the systems. Uh, those clusters, uh, they are changing the electrolytes and the structure. So we see the correlation of the clusters in long distance. Uh, the aliphatic cations, such as the ammonium, can improve the electrochemical windows of the liquids. So they are a good candidate for electrolytes in high performance materials. Uh, in our first grain model, uh, it's a powerful tool to understand the ionic transport properties and look to the scattering functions because we can deal with like it really long simulations. And our next steps, uh, we are right now doing some electrochemical windows investigation using a huge data set to try to correlate uh, the ionic and the structure with the stability of the system. And also we are doing some simulations to get interfacial phenomena for the electrolytes, ion liquids electrolytes and carbonaceous electrode materials. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tuana. Very interesting. Uh, research is always important to look for other ions, right? To, to perform this you know, all sorts of electro 
electrochemical devices. Uh, yeah, maybe I missed something, but you, you, your research, I mean, you, you are doing the electrolytes for, for any specific application or, or, or it it's can be applied to? Uh, yeah, in the case, we are doing the simulations for the sodium ion batteries. For the batteries. Yeah, okay. yeah. But using this kind of uh, simulation, we can change the, the salts and change the, the battery also. So what are the main difference between in, in, in terms of, of the, the calculations that you make between the sodium and the lithium? I mean, what's uh, more difficult in sodium? I guess to achieve? I the, the decrease uh, sodium, I think, impacts more the transport progress than lithium because of, of the size. Uh, okay. But in terms of like methodology or the computational um, way or the cost, uh, they are exactly the same because we just have to change like the, the Van der Waals parameters for sodium and lithium. It impacts a lot, right? The, 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 proper, or the other properties of the electrolyte. Yeah. I'd like to thank you. Thank you.